All right. Good evening, Country Church. Uh, so glad that you can spend some time with me this evening on Thanksgiving Eve. I don't know if that's a word or not, but uh, I'm guessing it is. As you can see, I'm wearing my Zag shirt. Hopefully they get a chance to play tomorrow. Um, we're hoping that they're going to have a great season. It looks like they could be pretty good this year. But, you know, there's so many things that we can just be thankful for. You know, and seeing what God's doing and remind us what God's doing. Just, uh, I'm constantly thankful. I'm just constantly thankful. And this week, I was, I was in such a good mood. I don't know what it was, and and I know there's a lot going on. There's probably a lot of things I could be distracted with, but I've just been, I've been so grateful and thankful for all that God's doing. Sunday we had Teen Challenge here. And Teen Challenge was so much fun uh, just to be a part of, and they have such a great heart and and um, ministry going on, and to watch those men serve and help our church and our uh, ladies, and uh, you know, come together to feed them. Uh, thank you so much. It was just a pleasure. And then the soup supper, and I know it was different, a little different this year, but um, we still had a great turnout and a lot of people starting to meet new people. And God's bringing people in, and in this time of of isolation and trying to be careful and and all the unrest and unknown god is bringing people to church and it just keeps blessing me to watch people just come to church and people invite their neighbors and, and friends and you know uh, bernie and delma if you're watching this i am just in awe to see that here's a couple that have been in church and been around forever and they started inviting their neighbor who's many, many years younger, um, and, and she's been coming to church. And it's so neat to see just the community and God just continue to move. And so with that, I mean, I just, I, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. Last night, or uh, Monday night, when we did the turkey giveaway here at the church, you know, I heard just great reports of of just the community coming together, you know, Riverside, the school, and kids, and, and our church, and some of the other local churches giving away. And I heard they gave away uh, about 170 turkey dinners to help bless people with Thanksgiving this this year. And there's just so many things we can be thankful for. And I know there's a lot of things we can we can complain about and a lot of things we can we can argue about and all these different things, but we can be so thankful for really all that God has given us. And 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 I'm thankful that you're spending some time with me tonight. And I do want to get into the word and I, I don't have it on the side screen. So we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. And so Get your Bibles out, and in our reading plan today, or pull out your phone and, and, and Google this, but let's turn with me to Matthew 21, and this was out of our reading plan, and, you know, I encourage you to keep keep following along in the reading plan. It's important that we just keep uh, staying in the Word. It's important that you stay in this Word, uh, especially during this time. Uh, Matthew chapter 21. Now, this next Sunday, we're starting uh, Advent um, uh, we're going to do the Advent uh, series kind of at the church here. And I know it's going to look a little different, but we're going to try to make it happen. And um, the first week we talk about is hope. Hope. And as I'm studying for this this week, I, I read this and I just wanted to share it with you. And it says in 21, Matthew 21 says this, uh, When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, um, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place, I want you to look at verse 4 here, it says, This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. And before we keep going, I want us just to just to, just to picture this scene and imagine what's happened. Because Jesus said, all right, I want you two to go and go ahead and go and, and pick up this donkey and this colt, and you're going to bring it back to me. And if anyone asks you, say, well, the Lord needs it. And there's something about this anticipation, this excitement of something that's coming down the road that God has planned for us. It gets us just kind of uh, stirred up and excited. And I think about, you know, the hope they have. And as they looked and they saw that God was beginning to fulfill some of the previous scriptures, the, you know, the, the disciples here, they knew the word of God. 
they knew the Old Testament prophecies. They knew what to be expecting. And when they were around Jesus, they go, this is the Messiah. I wonder how he's going to keep fulfilling all of the prophecies. And then Jesus is like, well, I need you to go do this for me. And can you imagine the disciples that were saying, we get to be a part of fulfilling the scripture. And it encourages me in today that we're seeing uh, things come to pass and we're seeing God begin to move. And it almost encouraged me to say, you know what? We get to be a part of fulfilling the plan that God has for us. You get to be a part of fulfilling what God has for us for us and what's moving on on uh, in this whole time. And so to me, that's it's really exciting that here these two disciples or the disciples here, they got a they got a chance to be a part of fulfilling scripture written 700 years before this happened. Can you imagine the script things we read in here that are that are going on and 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 then to be in the middle of it? To me that's an exciting time. What an exciting time we live in. You know, we don't have to live in fear when we keep saying that, oh, man, Lord, he's coming quickly. He's coming sooner. The the day, the hour, the time is getting closer and closer. And what a just a, a, a tremendous and an exciting opportunity and time that we have to be the church right now in 2020. People are asking questions. We get a chance to say it's in the book. People are wondering what's going on. It's it's in the book. It's that easy. Verse 6 says, The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them, and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats along the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. The crowds going on ahead of him, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we look at that verse right there. And I don't know if they realized it at the time. I don't know if they knew that they were doing what was pro- uh, what was prophesied in Scripture hundreds of years before this. But here we look back and we see, oh my goodness, here comes Jesus entered into to Jerusalem. Here, here he comes doing the very thing that was prophesied hundreds of years before. And when the Scriptures are all composed, it's easiest for us to say, wow, that's exciting. But then I begin to wonder about what is going on right now in our lives and in our time. And with that being said, are we a part of fulfilling scripture? And if we are, that really get, just, just gets me excited of what God's doing. And what is God doing in your life? And what God's doing in my life and in our family here? And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. You know, uh, it's 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 Thanksgiving tomorrow. I love Thanksgiving. I, I, I've probably said it uh, many times because I really like Thanksgiving. I like to eat. I like the family. I like food. I just like watching football on Thursday. Uh, it's Everything about it just brings back so many great memories. And I want to encourage you tomorrow as you're hopefully you're with your families and you're spending time just remembering and being thankful for everything God's given us. And whether it's 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 your husband or your wife or your children or your parents or your grandparents or your cousins or aunts and uncles and everybody that's around you. Uh, be thankful tomorrow. Be grateful in this season, in this time, when yeah, we could look at all the the negative things happening and all the, the terrible things going on. Um, we really have an opportunity to be grateful and be thankful and say, God, are, are we a part of fulfilling the prophecy that was prophesied some two thousand years ago? Are we in the middle of all this? And only time will tell. But see, our mission still hasn't changed, Church. We still need to go out. We still need to love people. We still need to uh, treat them the way we want to be treated. We still need to share the love of God with others. We still need to tell people that they need a Savior. And there's a lot of people struggling and hurting. And we need to uh, be compassionate to them. So with that being said, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Let me pray with you. And uh, thank you for spending some time with me tonight. Father, we just thank you, God, that we can come together. Lord, as I'm recording this, I know it's snowing outside, but inside it's warm. Lord, you've provided a beautiful 
a church for us to worship you in, Lord God, and we praise and we worship you. God, and I pray for tomorrow, Lord, for uh, Thanksgiving as people have uh, family and friends. And Lord, we just pray for your hand of protection, of safety, Lord, that you just watch over them. You keep us safe, keep us healthy, Lord. Lord, and help us just to spread your love and your truth. I know that sometimes families come together, it can be a little rough, but I just pray that, Lord, you intervene, Lord, and that we, we turn back to you. Lord, give us an opportunity to share your love. Keep us safe in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Thank you for spending time with me. Have a great Thanksgiving and hopefully go Zags tomorrow against Kansas. So talk to you later. Hopefully see you on Sunday. Bye.